pass over to our correspondent at the Pai Lebar uh, Air Base, uh, John Leong. John, bring us up to date. Yes, Jill, uh, as you can see, uh, Air Force One not quite here yet. We do get a sense that he is arriving very, very soon. The last we heard uh, just about 10 minutes ago was that he would arrive in about 12 minutes. So if that is accurate, we expect him to arrive in just about two minutes. Uh, the US forces have just switched on their power generator. We don't quite know what that means, but it seems to have gotten everybody uh, excited and in anticipation of the potential arri uh, arrival. I believe he is currently here. Uh, if you'll just follow me, uh, to my right, my cameraman will bring you to your right. You can, we will see Air Force One currently just taxiing in uh, at Payaleba Air Base, uh, the unmistakable American flag on its tail. Uh, and in not, I'm not sure if you can see it in this light conditions, but the uh, unmistakable blue and white livery of Air Force One. Uh, what's going to happen is that Air Force One will taxi to the right of your screen, make a round, and then come right in front of where if you can see a lady in a, a black suit is standing, that's where Air Force One will finally come to a halt. And you can already see, if you come a bit more to my right, you'll be able to see members of both uh, the Singapore and US Diplomatic Corps standing by ready to welcome the President of the United States, Donald Trump. Uh, you can see our Minister for Foreign Affairs, Vivian Balakrishnan, from the back just to the right, uh, to the left of the crowd, uh, he is reprising his role from earlier when he was at Changi Airport to uh, welcome North Korean leader Kim Jong-un to Singapore. And likewise, he is here tonight to welcome US President Donald Trump. Now, we are expecting, of course, a, a number of key personnel to emerge from Air Force One. Uh, we do expect Secretary of State Mike Pompeo to emerge from those doors. He, of course, has played an integral role in setting up this North Korea summit. Uh, he has had, by all accounts, very favorable meetings with the North Koreans uh, in, ahead of this meeting. And of course, Donald Trump will also descend from uh, the steps very, very shortly. Uh, one notable absentee, however, will be his wife, Melania Trump, who by all accounts is recovering from a surgery on a benign kidney uh, condition. So she won't be here in Singapore. Likewise, she wasn't uh, by his side as well in Canada, where Mr. Trump attended the start of the G7 summit, uh, one that has ended rather controversially, I might add. Uh, but that's a story for another day. The story right now is that the arrival of uh, Mr. Trump is uh, happening as we speak. It is a very, very momentous occasion. You can just hear the plane's engine starting to drown out my voice uh, just slightly as it taxis into focus. Now you can see the unmistakable livery, the blue and white United States of America emblazoned on the side of the plane. And it will be taxiing for another 50 meters or so before it comes to a halt. This is a rather impressive plane, I must say, a Boeing 747-200 custom built, 4,000 square feet of space on board this plane. And for those of you watching at home, that's equivalent to four four-room HDB flats. Pretty amazing when you think about how impressive this plane is. Inside meeting rooms, a gym even, a rest area, and this is where strategy and policy is formed in between trips, which is no doubt what Mr. Trump and his senior advisors have undertaken while on the way from Canada. It remains to be seen how they will approach the uh, summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, but Mr. Trump himself has called this a mission of peace. Your experts, Jill, earlier said that uh, it remains to be seen how they define uh, this uh, peace and this denuclearization, uh, but it seems that right now at least uh, things are not entirely, uh, uh, the expectations at least are not entirely the same. If you can see to your right, you'll see the aero bridge just uh, approaching Air Force One and this will be the steps where Mr. Donald Trump will descend from. Very, very highly anticipated moment here in Singapore. Again, you can see, uh, oh, many of the diplomatic corps taking out their camera phones now to snap pictures. And rightly so as well, because this is a very, very historic occasion. As many of our leaders have, have opined as well, uh, Prime Minister Lee Sen Long says this shows incredible confidence in Singapore to be able to host such a summit. Uh, Mr. Uh, K. Shanmugam, the Minister for Home Affairs, has also said likewise that it is in Singapore's absolute interest to be able to host such a summit uh, because, in his words, Pyongyang is seven hours away from 
by plane and 20 minutes away by missile. So absolutely in Singapore's interest and indeed the interest of the entire region to see some form of headway being made in terms of peace on the Korean Peninsula. Engines just uh, shutting down momentarily and uh, if you, you see to my right you'll see the motorcade starting to approach the plane. I'm pretty sure you won't be able to see it as yet but very soon you'll be able to see the presidential motorcade drive up among that Cadillac one otherwise known as the Beast, the presidential state car. John, uh, this is John, as I was saying, uh, this is not the first time Air Force One has landed in Singapore, is it? Uh, well, we, we have seen uh, Mr. Barack Obama, the previous United States President, arrive in Singapore for bilateral talks as well with Prime Minister Lee. So that was when uh, Air Force One uh, flew by. But still, uh, when you take it in the context of the, uh, the, the occasion that we are looking at, possible peace on the Korean Peninsula, then, well, it is almost, if you can call it, a separate occasion altogether. And I believe Cadillac One has just driven past the camera. That's the beast that I was referring to earlier. Uh, another custom-built vehicle, 15 million US dollars, capable of withstanding attacks uh, with its bulletproof windows and doors, as well as windshields, bulletproof tires as well. Wow. And this is uh, just moments away from President Donald Trump descending from those steps. Now you're watching uh, live pictures of the arrival of Air Force One at Pai Leba Air Base. Uh, President Donald Trump about to emerge from the aircraft. So let's bring in at this point uh, our US correspondent Simon Marks who's standing by at Nassim, which is uh, very, very close to where uh, President Donald Trump is expected to be staying uh, during the duration of the summit. Uh, uh, Simon, I'm not sure if you're able to see these live pictures, but very soon the motorcades that we're seeing uh, will be making their way to you. Yes, absolutely. We've moved, Jill. We're now directly opposite the Shangri-La Hotel, uh, where Donald Trump will be coming uh, from the airbase after he descends those steps uh, and leaves Air Force One. Uh, we are seeing the live pictures here. In fact, there's a, a crowd of local residents that have gathered around us here uh, to join us watching these live pictures of President Trump achieving what no American president has previously done coming for a summit meeting with Kim Jong-un and, of course, coming for that summit meeting here in Singapore. Remember that Bill Clinton really wanted to do this at the end of his time in office back in the year 2000. But ultimately, the Clinton administration concluded after uh, a series of conversations between the then yes. Secretary of State Madeleine Albright uh, and the North Koreans uh, that uh, it wasn't uh, uh, possible for uh, President Clinton uh, to engage at that Indeed. point with and the North Simon, Koreans. But it's fallen to, to President Donald Trump. As we watch Trump, uh, Air Force US One President Donald this. Trump descending the stairs of uh, Air Force One there, and of course the President descending alone uh, because his wife Melania Trump is of course not travelling with him. She's uh, at home recuperating. And uh, President uh, Trump uh, exchanging pleasantries and a handshake with the Foreign Affairs Minister Dr. Vivian Balakrishnan and other members of the Singapore delegation. Simon, as far as protocol goes, uh, what can we expect here? Well, there'll be uh, brief uh, handshakes and uh, short conversations uh, on the ground there at the Air Force Base. And of course, uh, the U.S. ambassador to Singapore and the diplomatic representatives will also be present uh, to welcome President Trump here, along, of course, uh, with Singaporean government officials. But then he's going to get into the beast, that enormous car that travels with him uh, around the world. And he will make his way here 
to the Shangri-La Hotel, which is going to be his base uh, during his stay in Singapore. Uh, there's no indication that he's got any more activities uh, on his agenda tonight, certainly nothing publicly anticipated, but uh, tomorrow, Monday morning, he'll be holding his bilateral meeting with Prime Minister Lee, uh, just as Kim Jong-un held his meeting uh, with the Singaporean Prime Minister just uh, around an hour or so uh, ago. And then uh, we'll wait to see what happens for the rest of Monday, because uh, officially there's not due to be any kind of encounter uh, between President Trump and Kim Jong-un until Tuesday morning uh, on Sentosa Island. But uh, we'll have to see if anything changes during the course of Monday or whether they're simply going to remain in their respective hotels. The Shangri-La for Donald Trump, the St. Regis for Kim Jong-un, closeted with their advisers, perhaps staking out in more detail their positions ahead of their face-to-face -face meeting. So Simon, as the motorcade we see now pulling out of a Pai Leba air base makes its way to you, I imagine that security must be at a maximum. Uh, yes, I mean, I'm bound to say uh, less than I've seen in other places at other times when I've covered U.S. presidents as uh, they've traveled. But I think that's partly due to the fact that the Americans are very comfortable with the arrangements here at the Shangri-La Hotel. They are no strangers uh, to this hotel, of course. Past American presidents have stayed uh, inside the Shangri-La, and it is, of course, home to the Shangri-La Dialogue, uh, which takes place uh, within the walls of the hotel every year and, of course, has very high-level uh, American participation. But if I take a look around now, I mean, you can see that there is security at this particular entrance to the hotel. There are other entrances to the hotel, and we don't know exactly which one Donald Trump's motorcade will use uh, as it enters the hotel where he plans uh, to spend the night. We're also waiting, Jill, to find out whether he had anything to say uh, on the plane to those reporters uh, traveling with him here to Singapore. Because remember that that enormous aeroplane doesn't just convey President Donald Trump uh, and members uh, of his inner circle. It also brings members of the White House press corps uh, to Singapore as well. Sometimes the president of the United States wanders back to have a chat with them when he's in the middle of a long plane journey. We haven't seen indica any indication yet that he did that this time. Remember, though, uh, that shortly after Air Force One took off from Canadian soil, President Trump threw all the cards into the air relating to that G7 summit in Canada that he had just left. He became so angry over comments that Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau made at a press conference after Donald Trump left the G summit early that President Trump then pulled the United States out of the final communique at the G7 gathering, an unprecedented move that isolates the United States from its partners in the G7. So certainly at the beginning of the plane ride, uh, he was very much focused on uh, disharmony and disagreement with some of America's closest allies, namely Canada and the European Union, over the issue of trade. He arrives here in Singapore saying that he wants to focus uh, on harmony and peace in the Korean